Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. Sue Me, by the way, available now that's the single. I'm going to play that for a few minutes, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, best part, the song you just did. Is that the one that her did on the Grammys? I think she did a different song on the Grammys. I don't know. She had this amazing guitar, though, and I sent it immediately to Caleb. It was a clear, see-through um, guitar, and I need whoever makes it, send it to me, um, if yeah, you're wish, listening right I now. I wish you would have brought that one today. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was beautiful. I don't think that's the song that she performed on the Grammys, but, but that song you just but a did. great song. I was watching you performing, uh, Sabrina, and your eyes were closed, and, and you were just in it you were swimming in that song i was just actually tired i'm i'm like sleeping <laughs> that's why my eyes were closed no don't no, say I'm that kidding. i'm kidding no, I mean, do you do you get lost in the music when you're performing sometimes i try to especially when like i get much more to be honest i get much more nervous in intimate settings like this than i ever do in front of large crowds yeah. large crowds to me it's like they are there because they want to have a party and in intimate settings it can kind of be like i don't know you're focused on like that guy on the left you know what i mean instead of like thinking about the song right so sometimes if you close your eyes, it helps it a little bit. By the way, the first time anyone's referred to this place as an intimate setting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this <I> dump? <laughs> Please. There's nothing intimate about this dump. <laughs> uh, so out on the road, you're mm-hmm. on a tour bus. I know. Where's your mom? Here. Hi, mom. Mama's over there with Love Sarah her. recording on her VHS right now. And your sister. My dad's old VHS camera. <laughs> wow. Yep. That, that is a relic. Yeah, oh, isn't fossil. it? Fossil. So you're all living on a tour bus right now? Yeah. What what is life like on the road in a tour bus? I don't. It's nothing that we've ever done. I don't think it Have is. Have you been on a tour bus though? Yeah, just I. Yeah, I'll tell you. The first tour bus I actually hung out with uh, some friends on was uh, with Fallout Boy. I mean, and what a great talk about a frat yeah. house on wheels, yeah. right? Yeah. And of course, their number one rule was no, you can't poo on the. <laughs> Okay, oh, just so you know, wall. it's not just their rule. It's like every, it's like universal for okay. tour buses. Right. It's not just Fallout Boy that did this. Can you imagine Fallout Boy? Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> they, you you physically, like, it will damage the bus. So where do you go? Like, when you get to, like, the, the restaurant? Is that when you go? Yeah, bud. You, like, you just gotta hold it. What if there's an emergency, though? Yeah. I don't know, man. I honestly, I don't know how I've trained myself, my mind, my body, my spirit to, like, oh. time it correctly no fiber allowed but you're also not no paper products so if you do use toilet paper you have to throw it out in a trash can oh. to train yourself to not automatically throw that in the toilet i love that we're talking about this good yeah. morning new york city um <laughs> no, it's life on the road yeah it's, it's life on the it road. is life on the road but do you have like a punishment implemented for those who poo just get off the bus you know what i mean well actually the, the punishment is the bus will break down and that's happened okay. to me before okay how I, I, no, without, I don't, you can't really explain. I don't know how that would break a bus. So, it's, it's the strangest thing I've ever heard. Where do you think it goes, though? I, I, it goes into not like a sh- tank. Not on the street? A tank? <laughs> what a tank? tank? There's a tank below. The poo tank. I don't think no. there's a poo tank, y'all. Well, poo where tank. does Wait a minute. <laughs> on an airplane? Where does it go in an airplane? It's the, it's the poo tank. It's got to be a poo tank on an airplane. Yes. <laughs> I think it just drops from the sky. No. <laughs> I swear. No. No. That's no. what that is. No. That's the sky. I can't Dang. walk outside <laughs> under a flight who, pattern. Who do you think out of your whole family would break the bus? <laughs> oh, oh wow. Me, for okay. sure. All right, all right. We'll move on. If it's anybody, it's totally me. It's so weird. I feel like moving on. Sabrina, <laughs> it's, it's weird talking about this in your mom's over there. I'm like, uh, change the subject. Uh, everybody <laughs> poops. What are you talking That's about? I know. I know. As if my mom, single, my mom is frowning upon this. Uh, but life on a bus. Are there, are there other rules about the bus? I mean, you know, there's got to be quiet time. There's got to be... There is quiet time, a little bit. Um, Who has the top bunk? Who has the bottom bunk? I know you're bunking. I, uh, my mom has a bottom bunk. My sister has a middle bunk. I have a, I have a bedroom. You have, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, but of course. Yeah, I have the penthouse bunk. I have, yeah, I have the luxury suite, and it's actually really not luxury. It's just a bed, but, um, <laughs> but it does make it a little bit nicer because sometimes the air on a bus can be very, uh, you know not great you're sharing like oxygen with lots of people and like that's why you try to keep the bus a little bit cooler because if it's too hot it's just like not not fun i would think a bus would be like a conduit for all sorts of disease yeah yeah. for (laughs) sure this is the worst interview ever the worst interview ever i was saying i was saying i do i do uh bus tours for some of my fans that come to the shows there's a couple of them every show that get to go on the bus oh cool so i have to keep it clean i have to keep it nice but i'm thinking about like just putting like a shrine in there i was 
going to start with the Jonas Brothers because it's very timely. <laughs> um, and putting the Jonas Brothers, like, just a complete shrine of them on the wall just to see if my fans notice. I think that'd be a good... Did you see the video of them come, breaking into my apartment and waking me up the morning that uh, Sucker was released? No, will you send it to me? <laughs> I think it's on, it's on Instagram. Yeah, it's on Instagram. Oh, I don't have Instagram. Actually, okay, I'm going to go ahead and let the bag, the cat That's, out of the that bag. That was a joke. Of course I have Instagram. <laughs> she doesn't have Instagram. That was a joke, yeah. Uh, it was all a setup. We we, we, we we taped it the night before. Why are you giving that away? Because I'm not going to lie. People, th- th- Jonas Brothers don't break into my apartment. Why not? You I shouldn't took, have said that. I would have believed that it was real. <laughs> I took the keys back. Oh, my God. Wow. They came over the night before. We drank tequila. And Amazing. Then, and then we, we pretended that they woke me up in oh, my bed. I feel that's, so duped. <laughs> I feel bamboozled. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, was. my God. That's the word of the day, bamboozled. <laughs> There you uh, go. Sabrina Carpenter, of course, sue me. I got to play that in a minute. Where is your head as far as your music goes these days? Because I know, because you know, Sabrina, you're you as all great artists do. You evolve, and music becomes something different to you, or you you look at it differently. You approach music differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, compare yourself to two years ago oh. to today. What is music to you now versus then, and how you perform and how you write? I think performing, especially, it's become like. I don't know, every ounce of me, like if that makes sense. Yeah. I I really feel like, especially now getting back into doing hour and a half sets every night, I was, you know, I hadn't toured in a couple of years and, except for um, some of the Jingle Ball shows we did in, in the winter. And those are short sets, you know, those are like 15 minutes, 20 right. minutes. Um, so getting back into like getting to really create a full show around Singular Act One right now, which is half of the album that I have out right now, um, has been incredible because I love the songs that I wrote on that first half and um, I'm writing, you know, the second half and it's coming out pretty soon. Wait, you're still writing? I thought that was out like any minute now. Well, it's going to be out any minute. You better hurry. It's going to be out any minute. It actually is done. Um, But I just always keep writing regardless. Um, I never stop writing. I don't think people understand how much hard work goes into what you and our other friends in the business go through. I mean, a lot of people have hard jobs, though. So I guess I look at it in in the big picture and I go, we don't really work that hard. But we do it just in a different way. You know, it's kind of like a, a it never it's like a job that you can't really like. I don't know. You don't go home and like you're done. It's like right. you go home and you're still working. You don't clock out. Yeah. You don't you never clock out. Right. You know. Do you have a dream team of people that you want to write with or tour with? Oh, wow. Uh, dream team of people I want to write with. I work with so many incredible, talented writers. I just wrote with Teddy Geiger for the first time wow. um, uh, right before I left for tour. And I love her so much. Um, and just, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm working with a lot of new people and, and seeing kind of who I who I gel with and um, who just understands me. I think that that's a huge, really important thing because I'm 19. I'm trying to understand myself. So it's really helpful when you have people that are, you know, one, taking the time to want to get to know an artist and help develop an artist. I think that that's a really special connection that it takes time to find. Um, So I'm working on that right now. Touring with, I don't know, I've got such a great crew and people that I tour with. Um, Who would I like to tour with though? I would love to tour with Bruno Mars. I think yeah. that would be the, oh, wow. the yeah. most fun tour. The most amazing showman oh, on, he really on the Yeah, stage seriously. Today. Yeah. He's so right. awesome. I love him. What about television? Are you going to go back and do that again? Telenovelas. Should I do a telenovela? <laughs> you <laughs> should. <laughs> See. Yeah. I think I want... No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I've done a couple of films in the past year. I have a, a film that's premiering at Tribeca next month, which I'm really excited really? about. What's yeah. it about? Um, it's actually like my, my first indie film. It's called the short history of the long road. He like points. It's called the short history oh, of the long road. Oh, it's written down in front of me. <laughs> and you're like, look oh, at your cards, okay, I'm Elvis. Read, I'm going to read what it said. 2019, we'll see Sabrina assume the lead role in the short history of the long road premiering at Tribeca Film Festival. I'm dying. And, I know. Look, look, when you're an interviewer, there's a trick no, you No, you, you're so spur of the moment. It's well, beautiful. Well, it's, called, <laughs> it's called, I don't prep for crap. I know. that. I'm trying to make it sound. Nice. Well, no, you know, I would rather, rather than sounding like I'm, I'm a know-it-all, and I, appreciate I would that. rather just ask you, like, oh, you have a film coming out? Knowing yeah. full well you have oh. a film coming out. That's my little trick. Oh, so you, oh. I'm kidding. You're I like a great Martin, actor. Starting and stopping. Yeah, right. starting and stopping. <laughs> on purpose. He's yeah. got this all planned. Planted Yes, so, that so, so that was actually, um, I filmed that in Albuquerque, and I, I had, um, last, last year at some point, I, I dyed my hair brown, mm-hmm. and it was for that movie, um, and I live in a van, and, um, I don't want to, like, spoil the whole movie, but, like, I'm, 
I basically live on the road by myself and it's very it's very emotional and it was kind of uh, something really different that I hadn't gotten to do before. Well, I hope you didn't before. poop on the van. You know what? <laughs> we know all about that. First of all, there's no bathroom on that one. That one's a little smaller. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, we can't end the interview with that. No, music. please go to something else fast. Sorry, music. sorry, Mom. Hurry. <laughs> Change the subject fast. I know that you played uh, the Wellmont in Montclair, New Jersey. I just did, yes. Uh, and you're playing Irving Plaza here in New York City tonight. So you're you're busy. And when I say these artists are working their butts off, she may not admit to it. I know how much work you guys put into what you do. It's it's not it's not the easiest thing. In the I world will to do. own it. It is a lot of work, but it you is. also work very hard. No, as okay. you can see, I just sit here and just <laughs> yeah, wing it. I talk, about, I talk about pooping on a tour bus. <laughs> That's my deep intellect. I love you. I love you, <laughs> Sabrina Carpenter. Uh, sue me. I'm gonna play it now. Congratulations Thank on everything, you so much. and thanks for coming to see us. You sounded you. so awesome. Thank you. I love you. I'll, hopefully, everybody likes the show tonight. Whoever's coming to Irving Plaza, I'll see you tonight. All right, Sabrina Carpenter. Yay!